Let's move on to the 80s. Money. Well, well when it, when, where it says bubble economy, that means one of Japan's many bubbles. Yes. Japan's economy. Bubbles being when an economy explodes way too much to actually sustain itself. So everyone will have lots and lots of money until something snaps and everyone has no money anymore. Which is pretty much what happened in the 80s. They this, this, this particular one is one of the larger ones because it triggered the South Sea Bowl. Basically, it ruined the, when, when Japan ran out of money this time, the whole of Asia ran out of money this time. And Australia lost some money as well. Mm. Just, no one had money anymore. Money's silly. Mm. And yeah, Tomino really uh, got the government franchise going in this decade. He also made Gideon. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah the, the, the point of studios having more money here is <coughs> instead of having, uh, instead of uh, going TV series, they're actually able to have. The, the, the funds to go, look, here's a theatrical movie that actually people will be interested in. Because you've got the Yanto movie and the, the Gundam compilation. Yeah, movies, um, this is also when like Bandai decided to experiment with making their own animation studio oh, right, for yeah, that's, films. And, and they, they sponsored a bunch of... Money, yeah. Yeah, no, but so then what Bandai did was we wanted a specific Bandai studio. So they went, okay, you guys in the shed, you're pretty cool guys. You, we'll give you lots of money and you'll make a movie for us. And went, okay, we'll make a really pretentious sci-fi movie that no one will like. And so they formed Gynax. <laughs> That's the Evangelion guys. Yeah. And the other things I mentioned. Oh, is this working? Oh, okay. Uh, the other things I mentioned from it was the other uh, magic franchise was the Macross franchise, which you may know as Robotech. Don't watch Robotech, though. It really isn't the same as Macross. And the Do You Remember a Love movie, which these two were pretty responsible for getting me into. And this is a clip from the climax scene of Do You Remember Love? So, Missile Circus was to reach 80s. The scene is extremely 80s. Yes, and I was singing about and those lasers, lasers were pretty easy. It looked like lasers though. Those aren't lasers, the lasers look more like lasers. <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. Go back to the start of this, because one thing we do want to show is go frame by frame. If you look more closely at this missile circus uh, scene, you'll notice a couple of interesting missiles. I think the first one's going yes, there you go. This is a fairly interesting. It's an octopus bag. Yes, but more interesting, all right, it yep. comes just after the red explosion. A few more frames. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. There it is. That is a Budweiser pad. The animators liked beer. <laughs> That's a good little trick, that one. Yes, and of course, this was the decade that Miyazaki really uh, becomes coming to his own, direct his own movies with Takahata doing the storyboarding. And after the success of Nausicaa of the Belly of the Wind, uh, they had the funds to form Studio Ghibli, which led them to soon make Labyrinth of Castle in the Sky. And one of the more the films that got more popularity in hindsight, perhaps not quite the time, was Totoro. And it was actually Kiki's Delivery Service, which was their first that was truly uh, a profitable at the box office that allowed them to become more powerful in the 90s. Now we've got a short clip of Totoro, I believe. Because in terms of merchandise, Totoro has the most value. Yeah, it's, it's like if he has enough money to have their own museum. Yes, there is a museum of this film, particularly the total thing about Totoro. And the, and the cutlass? Ah, uh, yes, and the cutlass. Yes, Miyazaki loves to personally to other kids that come to see this. Yeah, one of the reasons that that one was also not so much of a success was because it was actually a double feature film with another film which one of the other directors at Ghibli had made, which was Grave of the Fireflies. I took a See, you know, Grave of the Fireflies, the movie about the kids in the middle of World War II starving to death. It was a double feature with Toto. Basically, the goal was that we'll have this really impactful, really painful movie about people dying and why war is a horrible thing, but we'll put it with this double feature with a really happy, whimsical kids film, so that way, after the kids are done crying, we can cheer them up at the end. Yeah, that's really good marketing strategy.
energy. It's what John Lewis did throughout all the 80s and 90s. He was very strong in the idea that kids will watch anything if they can be happy at the end. So you can show dinosaurs mothers dying horribly if you make them happy at the end. Uh, another thing we'll uh, briefly touch upon in the 80s was the woman who was is pretty much the most successful manga author of all time, Rubiko Takahashi. Not sure anyone? Yeah. No, well, one of It's Oda. Oh, yeah, Oda's Oda Oda taking that well. Of course it's Oda. He's been writing one series for 10 years that everyone reads. Mm, it's true. Well, she's not yeah, several. Close to literally everyone in Japan. She's still a billionaire, put it that way. Yeah, but he's more of a billionaire. And he writes One Piece. Yes, all right. No we'll, one likes One Piece. We'll get to him later. We'll yeah. just get through Takahashi first. Look, she was invented by uh, the author of Lone Wolf and Cup, which was a pretty iconic series from back then. And she was told, look, create interesting characters and you'll be able to write good titles. So while she was still living in a pretty crap apartment where she slept in the closet every night, she that was so when she started writing Yurisei Atsura and Mason Nikoku, which was pretty much based on her own experiences at the time. And then after those was done, she then wrote Ram the Half, which is fusing uh, fighting elements into her usual romantic comedy work, and then later on she would write in Yasha. And she is pretty much one of the richest people in Japan. It put her in any currency, and she's a billionaire, put it that way. But she was an important for manga getting into the West in the 90s. And yeah, some of the other things that are uh, worth mentioning are fighting titles like Fist of the North Star and Saint Seiya were pretty important back then. Kimigiri Orange Road was kind of one of the, while it wasn't quite a financial success, it was, it's important because it's pretty much the most 80s show you can find out there. And it was one of the first that was actually a high school series. I mean, if you look at modern anime, it's hard to find a show that doesn't have high school kids in it. This was actually one of the first. I think I, think, uh, I, I, think I looked through it and it's, it is the first in a high school setting that isn't a baseball show. Yeah. Put it and yes, uh, shows like Dirty Pair and City Hunter, which were pretty kinky as well, uh, fused in the crime fighting element. No, it's just not so much kinky as explosions and lasers and some women who make the explosions happen. It still was pretty. Uh, Sometimes by teleporting stuff inside other stuff. Usually by lasers, though, really big lasers. It's a cool show. Actually, it no, it's, it's usually by complete accident. Uh, yeah, accidentally hitting a laser. Uh, yeah. Now it's shows. Mm. But it was when anime started here in the West. I mean, I was watching it fairly when I was a kid. And yeah, studios like Gainax and get, uh, JC Staff, which you know like now, they were doing in between work at the time. <coughs> okay, we've got a couple of clips here. Firstly, the opening to Fist of the <laughs> Involuntary bend over so so far back that their back breaks. Yes, well, then they back. back. Yeah, get back to the start of one too. But, right. but yeah, no, 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 the next one. It's started a bit early. Okay, and the other one is uh, Kimigiri Orange Road, which is pretty eighties, which is a love trial between Marco, who's a pretty feisty woman, but pretty rich. This, this is the one uh, we were talking about earlier. The, the, Really, the first high school romance. And she kind of has her nature soccer by Kiosk game, and there would be a couple if not for this bitch. Hikaru, who just has no common sense whatsoever. She's the tits! Yeah. And he also, also had a bit of psychic powers, which he used to save Marco in a pinch like this, with the music results. He didn't mean this to happen though, but this is probably where his better outcomes. Yeah, he only got it right because he sneezed right at the moment. That was a levitating roller, by the way. <laughs> 